Hey house churches, this is Stafford here. I hope you are having a great house church and I pray that you guys have great discussion coming out of this week's message. We just started a brand new series called Treasure where we're gonna be taking four weeks and talking about money. And that can kind of get sticky and we wonder why are we talking about money for so long? And I think part of it is, is just we understand what the financial reality is for us living here in Manitoba. In the message on Sunday, I shared some of the stats that have been done recently about how people feel about their money, how they manage their money, about what it means to come up with money in case of an emergency, or if they're living paycheck to paycheck, or savings, or any of that kind of stuff. We just understand there's a financial reality that we all live in, that as a church, we should be working really hard to help equip people on how to handle the very real responsibility when it comes to our finances. The other reason why I think we should talk about money lots is because Jesus talked about money lots. He did it in, in about half of his parables that he taught were directly tied to money. He used money as an illustration in them. If you look in, all, in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, one out of every ten verses talked about money. And in all of Scripture, we have 2,000 verses talking about money. So it's kind of a big deal to God. And I think if we want to be on, if we want to be um, if you want to honor Jesus and what he has asked us to do, I think we have to be faithful and also talk about money in these ways. So in this series, as I was preparing this message, I want to share with you my question, light bulb, and arrow moments. My question came is uh, when I was looking and seeing the response of the master to the third slave, the third servant who just buried the money. And I wonder, why did the master respond so harshly? Like it seemed almost like an overreaction. He was very pleased with the other ones, and this one he just seemed so angry at. And I think we kind of teased it out a little bit about that the, that the servant didn't align with what the master wanted to do, but my question then comes that if I'm gonna view this parable in light of me being a servant who's been entrusted with things and Jesus being the master, I begin to wonder, am I doing enough? Have I done enough there that he will look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or will there be a harsh judgment there? That can be really difficult to try and discern, but that's where I'm going with it, that I need to kind of discern and, and try and figure out why the harsh reaction. Is there something that I need to be doing uh, along with more than, than just believing? Does my faith and my actions need to kind of come together? So that's my question. My light bulb moment came when I was seeing at the very beginning of the parable, and the master's dividing up the money, five bags to one, two bags to another, and one bag of silver to the, the last servant. And it says, has this little line here, it says, uh, he gave it each according to their ability. And this was a light bulb moment. Understanding that there are some people who have more because they just have an ability to handle more, especially with finances. We've kind of seen it happen, you've seen it happen where people can win the lottery and be a financial ruin later on in life, like even like the next year. We can see what money does when people aren't well equipped to handle money that comes their way. And so for me, it was very illuminating to see that we sometimes are given things from God because we've grown our ability. We can be trustworthy with it. And so it's kind of tied to it is that we can actually grow our ability to become more trustworthy with what God wants to give us. And so that was a light bulb moment. We can actually increase our ability that we can learn how to do this well, and it's tied to our hearts. So that was kind of a light bulb moment. The arrow comes, for me, the conviction with it comes with, I just have to be really vigilant in how I'm spending my money. That's my conviction. I need, to be, I need to be better at it. I have to understand that God has given me what I have so that I can further what he wants me to do with it. That I'm a steward of this, that the money I have really isn't mine to hang on to. But one day, Jesus is going to come and say, Stafford, how did you handle the small things that I gave you. And remember, the small things we talked about was the money. Because we have the master in this parable say, the money is the small thing. There's something so much more. He wants to entrust me with so much more. He wants to entrust you with so much more. And so my conviction is, I need to be faithful with these small things. I, I'm not super wealthy. I'm not wealthy at all, really, by North American standards. But I do have money and a responsibility I gotta take care of. And I want to make sure that when I can do that, I can show it to God and say, look, this is what I've done with the money that you have given me. And he can look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. So my conviction is, get better with how I handle my money. 
I hope this has been a great first uh, message in this series for you. We're going to be talking about a few other areas, and we're always going to be promoting this uh, course that's coming up, I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you go to mypack.tv, you'll see a tab, I-W-B-N-I-N, I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. You can sign up there, and we're offering a six-week practical help, here's how you can manage your finances better course. Cost is $30 a household. Sign up, because space is limited, and uh, we, want help to, we want to help you win with your money and get your money in order, because God wants to entrust you with so much more than just money, but let's get that money taken care of and then you can share in his happiness as he says, here's so much more. Have a great house church, everyone. Blessings on you. I look forward to continuing this series with you next week.